In polls that measure the livability of America's cities, Seattle is consistently voted at the top of the list. People are drawn here from all over the country by the promise of a spectacular natural setting and pleasant, friendly neighborhoods. Proud as the citizens of Seattle may be of their preferred status, the residential neighborhoods that make up so great a part of Seattle's reputation are sometimes adversely affected by the growth they inspire. In the early 1970s, Seattle began working with community organizations to find ways to improve the safety and the quality of life on its residential streets. The traffic circle was one of the most effective solutions developed to deal with the problems of increased traffic volumes, speeding, and accidents on neighborhood streets. Experience has shown that traffic circles reduce the collision rate by as much as 90%. Also, because most drivers slow down at mid-block in anticipation of passing the traffic circle, it plays a major role in reducing the overall speed of cars passing through the neighborhood. This reduction of accidents and vehicle speed is accomplished without diverting cars to other streets or altering the established parking patterns. Traffic circles not only contribute to the overall safety of residential streets, but a landscaped, well-maintained circle becomes an attractive addition to the neighborhood. How do communities and neighborhoods go about getting traffic circles built in their intersections? Who is responsible for building and maintaining them? Anyone who recognizes dangerous or potentially hazardous traffic conditions in their neighborhood may contact the Seattle Engineering Department and request a traffic circle. The Engineering Department receives several hundred requests each year, but there are only enough funds to build 20 to 25 traffic circles annually. Therefore, the application process is very important. After contacting the engineering department, the applicant has sent a petition that must be signed by 60% of the residents who live within one block in each direction from the intersection where the traffic circle will be installed. When this first step, the petition, has been completed, the engineering department will study the proposed intersection in more detail. They will check the records to determine how many accidents have occurred in the last three and a half years. The vehicles using the street will be counted and their speeds measured. Points are assigned to each of these categories and after the studies have been completed, the total points are compared and the applicants are ranked in their order of need. This way, the locations with the most traffic problems are given the highest priority. The petitioners from the neighborhoods having the worst traffic problems are notified that their circle has successfully competed for funding and community meetings are scheduled. At the community meeting, a representative of the Seattle Engineering Department Transportation Division will explain how our program works and what the next steps are in the process. This is also a good opportunity for the residents to get direct answers to any questions they may have. For instance, how would the traffic circle affect fire trucks or other emergency vehicles? All Seattle Engineering Department traffic circles are designed so that fire trucks can go around them without going up over the curb. All of the proposed locations are sent to the fire department for its review and approval. If necessary, a mock circle of cones representing the size of a finished traffic circle is set out. The fire department trucks will then test their ability to navigate the circle effectively. the neighborhood decides it doesn't like the traffic circle. All of the traffic circles are considered temporary until the neighborhood has tried them for three to six months. The engineering department will then come back and measure the traffic volume and speed a second time. A survey card will go to the residents who petitioned the traffic circle and ask their opinion on its effectiveness. Has it helped? Has it made things worse? Are there any problems? If the neighborhood decides at this or any other time they do not want the traffic circle, a second petition is circulated to have it removed. Again, 60% of the residences must agree. 
the engineering department will take it out and restore the street as it originally was. Very rarely has a neighborhood asked to have a traffic circle removed. They are very effective. When the studies and surveys are completed after the circle is put in, it will be considered permanent and the city will landscape it. Is it okay for the neighbors to plant flowers and shrubs in the circle? The neighborhood may landscape the traffic circle as long as the plantings are low growing. The city engineering department provides a list of acceptable trees and plants. The neighborhood should designate a landscape person to work with the city. How do you make a left-hand turn at a traffic circle? You are legally allowed to make a left-hand turn at a traffic circle by either going all the way around the circle or making the shorter movement in front of the circle. After almost 20 years of experience and experimentation, the City of Seattle has found the traffic circle to be the most effective device for controlling vehicle speed and reducing accidents on residential streets.